are moments when they don't work, when there are stupid people. But Matt's people. ultimate point is that we have all these people that are still perpetuating a policy that is supportive of the banking system, for sure, whether, regardless of who's in there, and an economy that is has small business lending off a cliff, profits back at a record on Wall Street, one in four, one in seven uh, mortgages delinquent. You know, I can go on and on with the statistics, but basically the American economy was torpedoed and the financial markets were supported. And the reality, Matt, is it's far more profitable not to lend money in this country. Yeah, the, the, the fact of the matter is we're giving banks money at a time when the government has set rules that say, you can make more money if we give you money if you don't lend it. Right, right. And that is the inherent insanity of the entire situation. It's like, it's like giving the banks money, letting, legalizing the banks to make money without having to lend it is like letting the cops create a military state. Well, it, it, they're the custodians of wealth or the custodians of security have been completely compromised. Well, you think it's the people around the president that are largely responsible for that, correct? Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, you, you have to remember that probably if, there were, if you were going to have a Nuremberg for the financial crisis, Bob Rubin would be one of the first people on the dock. I mean, yeah. he sort of has a unique responsibility for what went wrong because he was not only responsible for the bad policy, uh, deregulatory policy under Clinton, but he also helped destroy one of the biggest companies in the world in Citigroup, and yet he was the guy who was put in charge uh, and his and his people of uh, being the architect of Clinton's uh, economic policy. I think policy. he's got a great point, and I'm a I was a Rubin. I mean, listen, I, I Bob Rubin is incredibly into, obviously very accomplished, intelligent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they had an idea which was we will create a hyper efficient system. We will create the most efficient financial system in the history of the world. As long as it doesn't collapse, we won't have a problem. But it's like an efficient sports car. It goes around the track real fast and then it blows into the wall. But if you're able to bail out and give the crash just, to the I, taxpayer. I just think we need to be careful because yeah. Bob Rubin isn't in the White House right now and, well, this, it, and the big bailout of Wall Street, we have to really be clear, mm -hmm. wasn't Obama's bailout. The bailout of Wall Street Understood. was Hank Paulson's bailout. Well, it no, happened under a Bush presidency. That's that's when the tarp happened. It was last No, there's no Obama question that the, that the car hit the wall last year. And that's but there's also the no question that the decision there was in, intimately right. involved with, with, with the bailouts every step of the way. That Obama, is absolutely Obama right Obama and it was Obama's the, choice to keep him, but it it wasn't Obama's way. But let him finish. That. Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> Obama got elected on uh, the day he got the day after he got elected. He put up two Citigroup executives in charge of the economic transition team, especially Froman. Uh, two weeks later, they do a gigantic bailout of Citigroup, and, the, and that very same day, those same those. Uh, Citigroup executives hired Tim Geithner to be the Treasury Secretary. I mean, it's, a, it's an absolute. And I'll make it worse for a Tim, I would say Tim Geithner, as the head of the New York Federal Reserve since 2003, as the bank regulator in New York over these banks, at a time when the banks are accumulating leverage, at a time when the swaps market is continuing to get crazier and crazier, that this that these people believe implicitly or explicitly that that type of modeling is somehow good for America. No, look, they've done it for over a period of years. Don't get me wrong. I I've written a piece today no, I know. I've read complaining it. I know. And about I, yeah. how the guys at Goldman Sachs think that they are Ayn Rand characters. Yep. But I just think we have to be careful to get our facts right. So, for example, if we talk about Citigroup, these actions were taken when Obama was not yet in office. And, yeah, and I think one of the original sins about the financial bailout was there should have been more strings attached. If you look at the strings that Warren Buffett attached to the money that he lent to Goldman Sachs, no, he got a better deal than the U.S. Treasury but, there's no, but, the, but to allow the continued funding of the banks under the counsel of the Obama advisory team and not come out with a windfall profits tax to take back the profits sure. that are being For made sure. this year and all the bank CEO compensation for the past 10 years because those people were per per paying themselves to accumulate risk that they couldn't accumulate because they legalized doing that. And the fact of the matter is, and I think Matt's on to something, is there's a good question to be asked, which is why is it we're not seeing a windfall profits tax? Why is it we're not seeing a restoration of the rules of lending and investing? And the question you're asking is maybe, the, or the, po the answer you're positing is maybe the reason you're not getting that is because the people advising the president don't want us to have that. And also you have to look at the way the financial regulatory reform was, was uh, you know, the, what what the White House's proposals were on that this fall. Uh, all the things that Tim Geithner sent to the Hill uh, were very, you know, there were really soft touches on Wall Street. There was, a, there was sort of a permanent bailout rip mechanism written to the resolution authority portions of the House After bill. The fact. And it, it required a sort of open revolt in, in the House to get, get those measures killed or watered, watered down. That, that was the White House's position. They wanted to have uh, basically an automated future bailout system. So that and I can basically pay myself out, torpedo the system, and then every 
agree, but whoever's left has to pay. It's totally nuts. And that was a guy who agreed with It was a built-in safety net for the top 25 banks in the country. I think that financial reform has not gone far enough. And that's all because of that was these people who were writing these bills. So so the issue that you take, Chris, is to say, but be cautious in assigning particular blame to Larry Summers or to Bob Rubin at this point because we don't have enough information to know who's doing or did what. But we know that what's gone on has been directly offensive and destructive to America and directly beneficial to the banking system. Yeah, I mean, we just got to figure out who and why. I think bailing out the financial system no matter what your politics, we have to be glad that that happened because we didn't have a second. See, I disagree. Depression. I would say that's like say that's like putting out a house on fire. We got to be glad we put the house out right, on fire. Right. Right. But we do. I'm more concerned about the fact that the people building our houses build houses that burn everybody in them down every ten years, right. and everybody wants to act like the fire was an accident. And the fire wasn't an accident. The fire was started consciously by individuals ten years ago, and it, and it came home. To, that's my. Yeah, issue. It's, it's also, it's also yeah. the repeat of a pattern. And let's not exactly. forget this isn't the first time. We've bailed out the Wall Street. You go back to the peso crisis, the, the, the long-term capital management, the, the you know Greenspan cuts the rates 11 times after the, the tech crash. We have the housing bubble. It's over and over and over again. We have the same policies, and it's because it's the same people who are who are setting the policies in the White House. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not a, it, it's no accident well, well, that this is like happening. Financial reform legislation needs to be the central point right. of discussion. That's about how the new house gets built. Right, exactly. And, and, and more importantly, making sure that we identify who burned the house down, who made themselves rich burning the house down, getting the money back from those who made the, themselves rich burning the house down, punishing those who burned the house down, and then building a new house that doesn't allow people who like to burn houses down to build them. I mean, and they're acting like the house fire was an accident. And I think that's where you run into a lot of problems. Again, exactly. There's a direct line. Bob Rubin back in 2004 and 2005 uh, yeah. urged Citigroup yeah. to invest heavily in the subprime market. It blows up. Yeah. I mean, he's directly responsible for, for Citigroup going into the tank, and we end up having to bail out this company at massive taxpayer expense, and he's the guy we put in charge of yeah. running policy. And he paid himself $125 million right, in the process exactly. at Citigroup. I, again, we know that the government is not dealing with the banks in the interest of America right now. We know that the government is dealing with the banks in the interest of the banks. Right. The question is, why are they doing that? Right. And we have to figure that out. Matt, I, I love your journalism, and I love your passion, and I love, I love you. So I appreciate it. I love her too, by the way. I'm a lover. It's the day before Thanksgiving. We're going to take a momentary break.